A good question you can ask yourself is, are you hanging on to something from a previous season of life that you can now release? Hello, 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 and welcome to the Sober Butterfly Podcast, your favorite sober lifestyle resource. My name is Nidhi Movina, and in this solo episode, I want to act as oracle and advisor. Please indulge me. Hence the title of this episode, Beware the Ides of March. Before we jump in, what are the Ides of March? So you may have heard this phrase and you're like, where does she get this from again? So the phrase Ides of March actually applies to the middle of the month or the timing of the first full moon. Now the phrase, beware the Ides of March is a warning, okay? It's a warning to watch out for betrayal or misfortune. And if you've studied Shakespeare in the past, I myself was an English major in undergrad, you may recognize the term Ides of March as it refers to March 15th, which was the day the Roman emperor Julius Caesar was assassinated. And for this reason now, it's been associated with bad omens, it's been associated with betrayal and misfortune. And that's usually within the confines of like a political context. But I want to rebrand or update this phrase into the 21st century and apply it to ourselves. So we often fall victim to our own hand. What I mean by that is self-sabotage. Okay, so if you're sober, for example, this could look like complacency, at least for me, that's a big issue. So maybe you're too comfy or you're too, yeah, you're just too comfy with your sobriety and you're not doing the hard work. Maybe you're not asking those tough questions, right? If you're sober curious, maybe you're over-intellectualizing the process of getting sober or quitting drinking. It doesn't have to be that hard, babe. If you're not considering sobriety What menacing thoughts or limiting beliefs are you still carrying that may lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy? Oh yeah, we're getting deep this week. So since March 15th is approaching, or depending on when you hear this, it may have gone, but you can still apply this to any time, don't worry. I want to frame this upcoming season, spring, which is officially March 21st. I want to frame this upcoming shift of seasons with some useful tips you can implement to avoid bringing negative habits or self-sabotaging into the new season. Spring, springtime, symbolically and literally represents new beginnings and transformations. And I like to think of spring as a a breath of fresh air coming in, right? Like winter is death. Get it away from me. But most people, you know, when they think of spring and like habits and ways to shift habits, they think, okay, I'm going to start with spring cleaning. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, girl, clean your house. It's good for you. But spring cleaning does not have to be limited to your home, your physical space. I would also encourage you to extend that same process to your body, to your mind, and to your spirit. What I've done is I love mnemonic devices like that's how I learned things in school so I've created a mnemonic system to help you remember how to reset for a new season I'm calling it the three d's so that's detox declutter and de-stress without further ado let's start with the first d which is detox moving right along to detoxing your mind okay so Hear me out, this one's hard. And I am not gonna front and pretend that I do this often, but I have done it and it has been beneficial to my overall state of mind. So this would be taking a social media detox. Yeah, it's hard because when do you when do you really like go without your phone? Like I, if I'm gonna be real with you guys, I take my phone into the bathroom. <laughs> like what do I, why am I doing that? Because I'm addicted, I'm addicted to my phone. Here's the thing, social media can be a really powerful way of connecting with others, especially if you're sober, that sober community online, like we go hard in the paint for each other. And I I literally have like my sisters and brothers online in arms, like in camaraderie around this. But if you're consistently seeing things or just mindlessly scrolling, Um, and you walk away, this is like my tip for people. Like, how do you feel after you're scrolling? Like, do you walk away feeling sad, angry, 
anxious, stressed, or bad about yourself, if you feel any of those emotions, then I think it's time that you maybe take a little break because it can have a negative impact, as mentioned, on your overall mental health. There's a culmination of different factors at play here. I think the main issues I hear, um, negative impacts, I should say, is related to always you know, wanting to present yourself in the best light. So that means presenting the best content, you know, responding to people, whether you know them in real life or not, making sure you like and or comment on other people's posts. Like this curated detail can be really overwhelming. And it's also really easy to fall into the comparison trap, right? Feeling inadequate if you fail to live up to the perfectly curated images that you see on social Um, or feeling like you have imposter syndrome. If, for example, myself included, like if you position yourself in a certain light as like an authoritative figure in a particular space, like sobriety for me, right? Like the list truly goes on and on. But the reality of social media is that it is a smoke show, okay? I love it, okay? I'm there for the entertainment most days, but it's also really highly deceptive. And sometimes you have to know when it's okay to fall back or pull back the curtain and see it for what it is. And what is it? It's a tool, okay? It's an app. And how you decide to use this tool or this app is highly dependent on how you perceive yourself. Even when you have like the highest form of self-love or self-worth, you can easily fall prey to like some of the things that I mentioned before. I think it's important to be honest and take inventory and know when it's okay to take a step back because you are using social in a way that may be critical to your mental health in a negative way. Knowing when it's time to take a break is critical. And on that same note, you know, when you decide to come back, it might be also important to refocus your attention, especially in the new season. So like, what accounts are you following? Are they positive accounts? Do they make you feel good? Do you see yourself in some of the posts? If not, then maybe they got to go. And that's okay. Sorry. Not sorry. It's okay to unfollow. It's okay to mute. More of that, please. Those functions exist for a reason. Use them. Okay, so detox. You want to detox your body. Our systems need a hard reset every now and then. Personally, since coming back from Paris, I've been eating extremely crappy and I'm actually starting a new cleanse this week. I love a good juice cleanse. I love a good smoothie cleanse from time to time. And I try and implement it every week or so into my schedule. So like for 24 hours, I will limit myself to just juice or to a smoothie diet. Some weeks are more successful than others. I haven't done that since I've been back from Paris. So yeah, I recommend that you find a detox that works for you and your body. I'm not going to specifically recommend any specific cleanses because I don't know what will work for your body or for your system, but I can share some things that have worked well for me. I've tried I've tried a lot of things. So I'll start with novice or like be- beginner friendly to more advanced. Okay, so on the novice or beginner end, I would recommend, or I'm not really recommending, but things that I've tried that are a little less hardcore, doing a half day juice cleanse or a smoothie cleanse, and then introducing a healthy whole foods diet back into your system around dinner time. Um, My quick caveat for that is do not eat too heavy because that kind of defeats the purpose, but you're giving your your system a chance to kind of like reboot. Digestion is actually like a mechanical and chemical process in your body. And so that's a lot. So sometimes when you can just remove that whole chewing and digestion part, it can actually really help. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but these are things that I've picked up along my own studies and have tried and had success with. On the medium side, I would recommend maybe trying intermittent fasting. Most like um, cleanses or diets, or whatever you want to call them, focus more on like what you eat, whereas intermittent fasting focuses more on like when you eat. It's more about regulating the time in which you eat. And so I've done that before in the past. 
it kind of triggers my disordered eating patterns. So I don't really intermittent fast anymore, but I know people who have swarmed by it and had a lot of success with it. And you can find different time structures that may work for you. So that's just a potential thing that you could try. Like my friend does, I think like they can only eat within like a six or eight hour window. And then the rest of the time they're giving their system a break to kind of like reset process, digest, and then they repeat the cycle the next day. And then the last thing I'm going to recommend, which is more spicy or difficult in terms of being able to reset your or detox your body is a water fast. The longest I've gone on a water fast is 40, 48 hours. So just for context, the longest I've ever done a juice cleanse, it has been 72 hours. I actually have a YouTube video I can drop in the show notes if you want to see how that went. This is before I got sober, actually, so it was a hard reset for me because I'd been drinking so much. It's actually funny to watch that video again because I talk about how hard I was going, and yeah, so it's just kind of like in the vault. I have those archive memories, but anyway, um, yeah, so 72 hours for juicing, and then the longest I've gone for a water cleanse is 40 hours. They're pretty intense. I have tried a program that I actually found on Goop which is Gwyneth Paltrow's site. I know people have mixed feelings about that, but like I found Prolon, which is a five day water mimicking fast on that site. And I've tried that. And I actually was in the process of making a video on that last fall when I did it and I forgot to actually make it. And I'm now trying Prolon again because like I said, Paris, I went in and then I continued those bad habits when I came back from vacation. So I may try Prolon again. So if you're curious to know what that's like, find my YouTube, subscribe, because I will be making a video about that. But you're actually eating food. So let me be clear, you're not like only drinking water for five days. It's like a mimicking fast. So it basically replicates or tricks your body into thinking that you're only drinking water. Okay, enough about that. My final component of detox is around your spirit. We need to detox, that's a mouthful. We need to detox our spirit. And the way I see this is a form of spiritual cleansing. And that's gonna help keep our heart, keep our mind, keep our energy from becoming toxic. Some easy ways that I would just recommend that you can try to spiritually cleanse yourself is smudging with sage bundled sage you're waving the smoke around your body and you can also do it in your home and you're ridding that area of negative energy of negative energy so the shaman in mexico city once told me that um the smoke from sage plants help to purify the environment and it as mentioned gets rid of any unwanted energies so smudging with sage is a really powerful way to cleanse yourself in your space of any negative energy or unwanted spirits if you believe in that kind of stuff too our next d stands for declutter so this is what people think of when they think about spring cleaning i think that you are decluttering your physical space and you can do this for your physical your mind and your spirit so i want to talk about physical space for a little bit because while you can declutter your body i don't actually i don't know what that would look like but you definitely can declutter your space your physical space everyone i don't care how neat you are because i think tidiness is on the spectrum i fall on more of an extreme end i'm not the tidiest person like i'm not messy like i'm not like a slob but yeah there's always like clothes strewn about and It's an organized chaos pile of things. Anyway, but I don't care how clean you are because I have friends who are like extremely anal about it, but everyone has that junk drawer, okay? Or Or that junk closet or room even, depending on where you live. So I like to focus on that. I think that's a common ground we can all relate to. So you want to declutter your physical space, right? So even if you are the most tidiest of tidy people, like think about ways that you can optimize your space. Um, Marie Kondo comes to mind because I love her. I actually, I'm just plugging all my old YouTube stuff. I made a video, The Art of Tidying, and it was using the Calm Marie method for decluttering your space, your home. It aligns somewhat to like the feng shui um, principle, Japanese principle of the of tidying being an art form, which is just so like brilliant to me. 
And not to like go too deep into the Marie Kondo method, but basically she makes you itemize everything. So like any little thing you have, and this is great for that junk drawer, you're categorizing it, right? Like you're going through categorically and placing things where they belong. So say for example, in this junk drawer, I had like my birth certificate. I had, I don't know, I had old earphones. I had um, a pair of boxers for my ex-lover. I don't know (laughs) what's in your junk drawer. Um, So all of those things I would take out one by one and I would categorically place them in one of like five, I think she's five or six categories. So like miscellaneous, old earphones, and then like the intimate things like your panties and things like that clothing um that would be like the boxers and then like important documents that's i think its own subcategory i'm going off of memory here but watch the video i'll I'll link it in the show notes but yeah she makes you go through one by one and in the process of doing that you are physically touching each item and if it does not elicit a positive um if it doesn't elicit a positive visceral response, so like physically in your body, if you don't feel that spark is what she calls it, this joy, this spark of joy, then bye-bye, it's gotta go. Like you do not get to keep it. And I actually did this when I was moving back to the States from Mexico and I had acquired so much stuff. Oh my God, like in a year span, it was ridiculous. So I couldn't bring all of that stuff that I had bought in Mexico back with me Um, so I had to go through and do that process and it was difficult, but it was beautiful. And she even like has you practice gratitude in that moment because you like take each article and you touch it. And if it doesn't elicit a positive response or like that spark of joy, then you thank it and you either donate it or you toss it. But either way, that thing has served you. It's no longer serving you and you part ways with it. I thought it was so well done. So yeah. Check out Marie Kondo. I wasn't even planning on talking about that. That was not in the script, but it came to mind. And I I hope that you implement that if you are decluttering your physical space. And yeah, the Marie Kondo method is one of the better ways I think that you can do that. There's also another, while we're on the topic, there's another strategy. I think it's called the Swedish Death Challenge. Oh, let me check that (laughs) before I run with that. Okay, my brain is working today. Yes, it's called The Gentle Art of Swedish Swedish Death Cleaning. And it's similar in the realm of like the Marie Kondo space, but basically the difference here is like, they're like, think about it from your loved one's perspective. I like the Swedish death method too, because I think it's like a good way to like think about life, which is a little morbid, but true. Like we're all gonna die. And so the Swedish Swedish death cleaning method is a way of organizing and decluttering your home before you die to lessen the burden on your loved ones. One of like the main points is like, yeah, if you're embarrassed to have it um, in your possession, if you were to drop dead unexpectedly, <laughs> then maybe you should get rid of the things, right? Like thinking more mindfully about living your truth. I thought it was funny. That part was funny. It's like, yeah, if you're going to be embarrassed of this thing in your junk drawer, for example, get rid of it. Bye. Okay. So declutter your space, right? We get the point. In terms of decluttering your mind, I'm going to recommend that you think about priorities here. Decluttering your priorities. It is hard to live in 2023 because we are kind of straddling the line, right? Like I think as a millennial, I came from a generation that was more so living on this team no sleep culture, like that hustle mentality. And now we see the emergence of living in our soft girl era, right? And romanticizing our lives. And it's like, how can these two coexist? Because I am wired to still have that min- that millennial mentality, which is like, girl, you got to grind, you got to do all the things. But at the same time, I, I still, I also want to be soft and be like, I just want to take a nap. I think, I think the two can be true, but I, I have not been able to balance, right? I find that journaling helps me with this because that's a prime example, like these two dualities that are coexisting for me in my mind. It's like, my operating system, which is my brain, has too many tabs open. (laughs) It's too many tabs currently open and it's slowing down everything. And it's like a good way to think about it for me is like, okay, if all these tabs are running simultaneously, like what do I need to close? 
And this is where journaling comes into play for me because I'm a very like visual person. And so if I put down all of these like priorities, all the things I want to do or think I have to do, like I realize when I put it on paper, I can't, I can't do it all. And that's okay. And like, I think also being in Aries, um, we're really good at starting things. Like we have this impulsivity to like get up and act like we are great at acting, but the follow through, <laughs> the follow through, it's so hard. And so for me, I get super overwhelmed because I have so many great ideas that I like always want to get excited and going. And um, yeah, it's just not possible. Multitasking is another difficult thing for me. So it's really great when I'm able to declutter my mind by putting things down on paper, usually in my journal. I'm also big on list too. I'm a big list maker. And so when I do that, it's like, okay, like it's going back with that open windows tab thing, right? It's like, okay, are you still watching that Netflix show? Why you're shopping on Revolve? Checking on Red Inbox? No, like you're not doing all of those things at once. You gotta close some things, pick a tab, close the rest, keep it moving. So that's what has been working for me. What strategies are you guys using to declutter your mind? And going into the spring, I think once again, running with this idea of rebirth, transformation, it's really nice to have clear intentions walking into a new season of life. So what things are you going to work on? But in that same breath, let's not overwhelm ourselves to the max. Like, let's keep it nice and concise. Alrighty, so finally, we have how to declutter our spirit. Going back to this idea of, like, everyone has that junk drawer. It's like, okay, what's in your spiritual junk drawer? Um, what old beliefs maybe are you holding on to? Are you carrying resentment still? Are you afraid? And I, I think all of this is connected to unpacking your clutter, your spiritual clutter, and knowing when it's time, and a change of seasons is a good time, <laughs> but knowing when it's time to release and surrender. And a good question you can ask yourself is, are you hanging on to something from a previous season of life that you can now release. I will say that again, because I think that's important. Ask yourself, what are you? Because I would even argue that we all have something that we're hanging on to. So what are you hanging on to from a previous season of life that you can now release? And then a follow-up question to that would be, what negative emotions do you want to surrender to your higher power? My higher power is God doesn't have to be God for you. It could be anything. But what do you want, need to surrender or let go? All right. And now we've arrived at our final D, which is de-stress. So important in this stressful ass world. Sometimes the simplest remedies are the best antidotes to stress. So you want to make sure you're moving your body, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, nourishing and fueling your body correctly. Aligned to the physical, you want to make sure that you're active, okay? Virtually any form of physical activity can help you de-stress. In fact, if I don't work out, I feel stressed. I often forget how important on that note of like these simple things though are. Like I often forget how important sleep is. And so I want to remind you and also myself that it's not okay to not get rest, okay? In terms of our mind, when my mind is overstimulated or experiencing brain fog, I need to recharge. And so that's when I think journaling, I think reading a book, I think yoga, going for a walk, going for a run, um, and when my mind is more lethargic or running on empty fuel, that's when I think it's time to go to bed, okay? <laughs> so if possible, I would recommend keeping a record of those moments when you feel most stressed. Data is important. It's irrefutable when you refer back to it. Maybe you start to see patterns emerging, such as common triggers or stressors, and that way, when you recognize them, you can adjust accordingly. And then finally, looking at de-stressing our spirits. Ah, oh, this one's this one's hits hard because sometimes that spiritual burden can be so great. And when I get too warped 
in my own world or wrapped up in my own issues, that's when I know it's time to take inventory of my life. Is my life perfect? By no standards is it perfect. But do I have so much to truly be grateful for? It's limitless, truly. And when I lean into that gratitude or the spirit of being gracious, I feel so much better. We understand the impermanence of life, yet we waste so much time, precious time, preoccupied with matters that are simply not important. So remember, spring is all about new beginnings and new life, hope, rejuvenation, transformation. Don't stand in your own way, right? Don't have that negative self-talk or that limiting belief system deny you life's joys and pleasures. You deserve the best this season of life has to offer, but you don't want to leave it to chance, okay? (laughs) Instead of saying, beware the Ides of March, let us embrace the Ides of March by implementing the three Ds, okay? Detox, declutter, de-stress. Say it with me now. Detox, declutter, de-stress. It's going to lead us to the best spring of our lives. Okay, So we're just about wrapped, but I want to introduce a new series to the show. Welcome to the first ever installment of this new series. I'm calling it the Sober Butterfly Collective, which is a curated collection of sober goods or goodies, news, and products, all of the things that I love. My sober spotlight was Barbara this week. I also wanted to do a quick plug for a sober, well, it's not a sober podcast. It's a podcast called Diary of a CEO featuring Stephen Bartlett and I have like I have a crush on him can I say that he's just so smart and cool I I just I love his podcast it's one of my favorites he had Lucy Hale recently on his show and if you don't know Lucy Hale she's an actress and I think one of her biggest roles was in Pretty Little Liars which I wasn't like a super fan growing up but I watched it when I was in high school she's she and I are probably around the same age Anyway, she goes in with her story, so I highly recommend just listening to her bit about what life and addiction was for her. She drops a lot of gems, but I think the thing that stood out to me the most was hearing that obviously you cannot get sober for anyone but yourself, but one day she just decided that she deserved it, like she was enough, and she deserved a life worth living. And that was really powerful. So if you were interested, I highly recommend checking out that episode of Diary of a CEO. And then the last thing I want to say is because the Oscars premiered yesterday is Cara Delevingne. Oh my God. I'm going to talk some more about her next week, but I'm just so inspired and proud of her journey. I mean, just four months ago, we saw her at a real low point. I don't know if that was a breaking point for her, but there were these images that were printed, of course, all over the news um, and various social media outlets. And it was like her looking extremely frail um, in terms of her physical disposition, but also her mental state. And um, there was even images that surfaced of her good friend, Margot Robbie, um, going to visit her and coming out of the house crying. So there was all this speculation that like she was you know, in a really bad place. And so she was, um, she admits she did a, an exclusive, I believe with Vogue, which I haven't listened to yet. So I'm going to listen and check back in with you guys next week, but she does this exclusive and I've seen some buzz around it, but basically I know that from seeing those same images that we saw plastered all over the place, that really gave her ammunition to check herself into rehab. So I'm so glad that, you know, Sometimes the media can be good, and she saw that as a wake-up call to get the help that she needed. And last night, she was just my favorite look. Like, obviously, I'm biased because she's newly sober, and I'm just rooting for her. But even outside of that, like, that dress, that old Hollywood red gown was just perfect, perfect, the idea of perfection. So I am super happy for her and happy for her journey. That's all I got for you guys for the Sober Butterfly Collective, my first installment. I hope you like. Yeah, any other things that you guys are interested in hearing, please let me know. I'm always looking for more inspiration. If you would like to be my next Sober Spotlight, make sure you connect with me. Everything is in the show notes, all of my details. So if you want to connect, 
it is easy to find me. All right. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. And I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.